So I've actually been more excited for this to arrive than I have been for anything the last few months. It's finally here. It's the Dynatech ignition system. So it's the Dyna S ignition system. Here it is. Basically what this does is it takes away your points, your mechanical points, and makes everything electronic. So it eliminates that whole mechanical thing that you've got, you know, you don't have to measure your gaps, you don't have to worry about your gaps, you don't have to do anything. This is a godsend. A lot of the later GS550s had, you know, electronic ignitions in and what you'll find is that bikes that I do, but my one doesn't. So with the use of this, this, and another bag of little bits, I'm gonna get this bike going today. I hope, I really hope it's gonna get going. So I mean, as usual in the comment section, I've had people saying, you know, we're not really interested in the whole valve shim or the carb adjustment. You know, we just wanna see the bike running. <laughs> yeah, so do I. But that, you know, those other videos, you know, are sort of, the lead up up to this so let's fit this in and see if it works <laughs> so this basically is replacing that there so that's simply enough what the job is going to be so the first thing I'm going to do is remove this screw here so I can take the actual spindle out So now I'm going to move these three screws here, so that basically holds it in. Actually, first thing I'll do is I'll move the wires up here. Next thing to do is to take this off. So this is essentially your weights. So you see, when your engine spins faster, what's going to happen is that these weights open out. Let's see if I can show you there. Then these weights control your timing essentially. So the faster your engine goes, then obviously your timing is going to change to, to sort of regulate against that. I'm just going to lubricate these. So this middle bit here now needs to come out. So if I open the weights, take this out. I'm just hoping that nothing's going to spring out of the way. There we go. And this needs to be replaced by this. So this is the magnet. So you need one and four. So you can see on the top of here, that's one and four. Just about to see it in that corner there. So with one and four at the top, this needs to point to the left. So on the side here, you'll find a little indent. That's the magnet itself. So that needs to point to the left. Trickier than I thought trying to do it with the camera in view. There we go. So that's now in. So this is now in the weights. And you can see when I turn this, the weights actually open out as well. So I'm just gonna clean that quickly and then I can put it back in there. Really simple. And now it's time to put this on. Oh, no, 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 forgot. This first. That shows the mark for the top dead center. And now this. Now I've got all the wiring done, so it's all wired as it should be, so it's simple enough, you know. The new wires go to wherever the previous or the old existing wires were, so it's, it's pretty much a, a like for like swap. Now what you'll see up here as well is I've just put a that little tester, that circuit tester that I used in the last video when I was showing the points itself, so I've hooked that up to the negative here, and then up to the positive of coils number one and four down there, so that's my light up there. So when the engine gets switched on, you can see the light, let me put it into focus. When it's at the correct position, when it's at the firing position, the light will go on and off on that there. So I can get the entire shot in the camera. Now what you do with this, to set your timing, is you put your points on the fully advanced uh, timing mark on here. So you've got three marks, if you remember back to the uh, video on how to set up your ignition points, you've got three marks. You've got the top of the centre, which is the T, you've got the firing uh, line, 
which is the F, and then you've got a further, you've got a third mark after that, which is your fully advanced timing. So essentially what happens is the faster your engine speeds up, you've got little weights on each side, the more the weights will actually open up, and then this little bit here will open out and then advance your timing as you need it. So what you need to do, set your mark to the fully advanced timing, twist this clockwise so that it kind of mimics uh, your engine going at that advanced timing and then you need to make sure that that lights up when that's happening there. That's set there. Let's try this on with the firing mark now. And that fires there. Perfect. Now we'll go on to points two and three. Just this all the way around to the advanced timing mark. That's on. Open this out and it's advanced. Let's just push this on a little bit further so I can actually make sure that the light's not coming on any sooner than that, which it is. So then using an Allen key or a hex key, open size two and three and move these about so that it closes just about there whoops tighten these up perfect next thing to do put the tank on put some fuel in let's see if it works So I'm going to end the video here at the moment. I know it's probably not the most exciting of places to stop, just as the engine's going, but of course, as with these bikes, nothing's going to be straightforward, is it? So the bike at the moment is running on three cylinders, um, and that's all down to a faulty uh, float needle. So I, kn I knew for a long time that I was having troubles with uh, cabaret number two, overflowing and everything. Um, so just out of interest, I swapped. Uh, the float needle and, and the float seat itself um, to cabaret number one and then that kind of tells me if, if the problem then moves from number two to number one then obviously that's what it is and as, as so happens cabaret number one isn't working now so I've ordered a new float needle and a new float needle seat as well so that'll be arriving on Wednesday and at first glances as well the bike is still running really really lean so it seems to me that the 87.5 might not be big enough as main jets. So what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to order uh, size 90s and 95s as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a whole two jumps after trying the main jet at size 90. I'm also going to order an idle jet at a size 20, but I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to see how the 17.5s fit. Uh, once I've got all four cylinders running, then obviously I can start colour tuning. The colour tune is here, so those of you who follow me on Instagram have seen that the colour tune kit is here. I don't know where it is at the moment in the shop, somewhere in all this mess. So as soon as I've got that float needle sorted, I can colour tune it and then I can sort of guess what needs to be done from there on. That's going to be next week's video, is fiddling around with the colour tune and the jets and trying to see if I can get this bike sounding a little bit sweeter. So for those of you that want to stay up to date with the GS and the CX, which is kind of half ready, um, God, that's heavy. The CX will be back on YouTube pretty soon, so if you want to stay up to date with that, then 
subscribe, give me a thumbs up, give me a like. Your support means a lot to me. So follow me on Instagram and I'll see you next week.